All right, so today we're gonna to be taking a look at controlling one of these cheap digitally controlled power supplies with an Arduino. So if you haven't seen one of these before, they're pretty simple. Basically what you have is a little uh, LED control module on the top of them. There's an up key, a down key, set key and an okay key. And what you can do is you can use the up and down arrows to set the voltage and current limits. Then off to the side here, we've got three LEDs. One shows that it's in constant voltage mode, one shows that it's in constant current mode, and one of them shows that the output is on. Now one interesting thing that I noted about this thing at one point is that there's actually a serial port down here. There's a little thing that's marked as UART, and then there's a uh, TGR and V and what I've done is just soldered a pin header into that so I can plug in an Arduino When you set this up the T pin goes into the transmit pin, which is kind of weird Usually the T would go to the uh, or transmit would go to receive and receive goes to transmit But in this case the way that they've got this set up transmit pin goes to the transmit pin G is ground and then the receive pin goes to the receive pin on the Arduino and the voltage pin, I believe, will provide 5 volts, but that's unnecessary. You just need to have the grounds connected together. Now, since we live in the age of the internet, I managed to go online and just find a library that actually allows you to control these power supplies with uh, pretty little effort, and I'll show you the code for that later, and also I'll put the link in the description to the library that you can go and download. All right, so I've got a little demonstration set up. I've got a section of LED strip this power supply, I'm using an Arduino Leonardo. I've got a oscilloscope probe that's measuring the voltage output of the power supply as well as another one that's measuring across this resistor which I'm using as a current shunt. So uh, I can show you what's going on with current and voltage. There are several things that this library allows you to do. One of them, and the most important one at least for me, is to be able to set the voltage and current that the power supply outputs. You can also enable and disable the output, and you can also read the voltage and current that the power supply is putting out. I'll go ahead and show you a little demonstration here as well as kind of talk about some of the code and how that works. So I'm just going to go ahead and demonstrate this little piece of test code that I wrote here. I base this off of the example that came with the library, but this does a few things. Uh, one is that it demonstrates how you can set the current limit on these power supplies and it demonstrates how you can change the voltage and it also demonstrates that you can turn on and off the power supply. So, I'll explain what this does first and we'll take a closer look at the power supply and everything else. So the first line is include buck psu.h, of course that's just to include the library, and then we declare which serial port the PSU is on, which in this case is serial one. I'm using this on an Arduino Leonardo, and apparently the guy that wrote the libraries for this is also using either an Arduino or Leonardo or an Arduino Mega that had multiple serial ports because this is how he had it set up as well. But on the Arduino Leonardo, the uh, the RX and TX pins uh, one and zero on the board are a separate serial port from the one that the USB connector uses. So. <clears throat> That gets declared as serial one. This integer is the current limit. It's just a starting current limit, 100 milliamp. Now this first part here, the serial that begin in the serial print is, is kind of leftover code from the example. So serial one dot begin 4800. That is the serial port that is connected to the buck converter from the Arduino. 4800 baud is apparently just what these things run at. So you kind of have to have that there. And then this first thing. It's PSU.setVoltage. Uh, I start that at zero. Now I put a 100 millisecond delay in here because I noticed that if you don't put a 100 millisecond delay in there, it seems to not actually take the uh, current setting. So if you do put the delay in there, everything seems to work properly, but if you don't, sometimes it misses the commands. So put a delay in there, and then I put another delay and then just enable the PSU output. Then the void loop. So these two four loops basically just set up a simple fader for our LEDs. So we go from seven volts up to 15 volts in 250 millivolt steps. Now this four loop will run up and then this four loop will run back from 15 volts down to seven volts. And I'm going down to seven volts because that's about when the LEDs turn off. So there's no point in going any lower than that. I do want to note that this thing does not like it if you try to send it commands too quickly. In this case, I'm doing, uh, I'm jumping a quarter of a volt every quarter of a second. I try to go up by 100 millivolts every 100 milliseconds, but that did not 
work the power supply just kind of spazzed out and did some really weird things so you can't send commands at it too quickly i think that might have something to do with the fact that it takes a little while for the power supply's voltage to actually go up or down and if you start sending it commands before that happens it starts to uh get confused maybe or something and it just uh it just doesn't take the commands right so anyway after that I've, yeah, I did this basically just as a response time testing. So we go from eight volts to 10 volts to 15 volts with delays of one second between every one of those. And you'll be able to see that on the oscilloscope as well as the uh, LEDs probably. And then just to test it, make sure it would work, disable the PSU output. Again, putting a delay in here because it seems to not like it if you don't use delays between the commands and then set the voltage back to zero. And then I have this if statement here. So if the current limit is less than 12,000, which in this case, this power supply has a current limit of I think 12.1 amps or something like that. It's up there quite a ways. So this just checks to see that the current limit hasn't gone over 12 amps. If it hasn't gone over 12 amps, we're gonna up it by another 10th of an amp or 100 milliamps. And then we set the current in milliamps to whatever the current amperage setting is. Then we have another delay and then we re-enable the power supply output and start with this sort of fading thing. So every time that loop goes around, the set current of the power supply goes up by a tenth of an amp. And if I go ahead and reset the Arduino here, you'll see that the current and the voltage will peak out at something like nine volts or something like that because it only has 100 milliamps to work with as opposed to the full, I think it takes about 400 milliamps to run these LEDs. So you don't actually see the full cycle until this loop has gone around about four times. And you see it's kind of funny looking on the oscilloscope there the first time it goes around because it really doesn't get much above about eight volts. I will note that this power supply has a bit of overshoot which you can kind of see on the scope when it does this little thing. And you can also kind of see, yeah, see there's that little glitch in the scope there. And you can also see it in the lights when they kind of flicker. So it seems like when you set some of the voltage points, it tries to go for the voltage point first and then it kind of realizes that the current's gone too high and it backs off. Now I've never really noticed it doing that when you just use the controls on here. Though also I've never really use the controls on it that much and had oscilloscopes and everything set up to it so the power supply seems to have a little bit of an overshoot error and that's probably a fault of the power supply not just because we're running it through a serial port like this and you'll see there i still have a flat line on the top of that waveform because we have uh, a limited current still I believe that the next time this goes around, you'll be able to see the entire cycle though. So controlling a power supply like this, it seems to work fairly well. You'll notice that the uh, module up here, well, maybe you can't see it on camera, but I can see it in real life, but the module does uh, flicker a little bit more than it normally would. It actually flickers quite a lot. It seems like there's some kind of an interrupt or something like that that messes with the multiplexing on the uh, LED displays. So every time you send in a command, that LED display kind of flickers. So anyway, now you can kind of see what the full cycle is supposed to look like over there. You've got the full ramp up and ramp down, as well as the steps from eight volts to 10 volts up to 15 volts, and then cycles back around and starts ramping up and then ramps back down again. So I will also go ahead and show what the example code does. This is the entire thing. Essentially, it just sets the output voltage to 12 volts and it sets the uh, current to 100 milliamps, enables the output, and then it sends back through the serial monitor what the voltage and current is. So after this uploads, we can click on the serial monitor here. Right now, our, our output voltage is 11.99 and our current is 380 milliamps and output enabled is equal to one which means that the output is enabled of course now as i think i mentioned earlier i found that if you don't have a delay in this it will not actually work so we'll put a 100 millisecond delay in between all of these for some reason the enable output thing works but if you don't put the uh, delay between your set voltage and set current it will not actually set the current limit so if i do that and re-upload it 
you'll see that this will uh, take the current limit into consideration as well. So they look at the serial monitor now. Our voltage is 9.18 and the current is 90 milliamps. So there we go. And you'll notice that it does line up with what's on the screen. So we've got 90 milliamps there. And if you look at the voltage, it's 9.21. Exactly the same as what this is showing. And again, we can of course change our current limit. So if I bring it back up to say half an amp, the voltage and current will change and those LEDs will get brighter again. And there we go, that brings our voltage back up to about 12 and our current back up to 380. Now another thing I'm gonna note is that this measures everything in millivolts, which is relatively convenient. You don't have to mess with decimal points or anything, but the, the least significant digit on here, that zero, is not a measurement, it's just there, it's just a zero. This thing only measures down to the hundredth. Of course, millivolts would be down to the thousandth. So when you're setting things, just keep in mind that the you can't set things down to the one milliamp. You can only set things in increments of 10 milliamps. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Upon first glance, I couldn't find any videos showing how to do this. Of course, I did find the library as well as the information on how to do this with a quick Google search. I'll put a link to the website that I found that shows you how to hook this stuff up and kind of explains what the commands are and if you wanted to do something like this yourself besides using the library. Looks like it'd be pretty simple. I just wanted to get something set up quick and dirty for this. I'll also put a link to the GitHub where you can get the code for the example that I've made here, as well as that slightly modified example code, so if you're having issues, you can uh, test it as well. So anyway, if you liked that video, found it useful, click on the like button. Have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them, and I'll see you next video, guys. Bye.